Boys and girls, welcome to the 13 Nights of Halloween. Hey, that gets my goat marathon with Rich Outfield and Big Anklevich. Hello, everyone. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. Welcome to another horrifying night of the 13 what is it called 13, 13 nights of halloween okay that kind of ruined the mood but i'm gonna i'm gonna plunge on i'm gonna continue forward another horrifying night of the, the, oh, forget it welcome everybody to another show before we get going too much farther i'm just going to remind everybody that uh, there's a donation button on the website we're providing these for you as kind of a a little thank you for donating. It's it's one of those things where like I don't know if you ever had somebody that was this way where they tried to teach you manners or something like that and they'd like give you something and then they would say you're welcome before you even said thank you because you didn't say thank you like I don't know fast enough for them to feel like you were going to say thank you. And yeah, I had a friend whose dad did that to me and I was like, gosh, you're a douche. <laughs> it um, is a douchey thing to do. Yesterday I was... And, a- then, and then worst is he says, you're welcome. And then I'm like, huh. The, the, the proper thing to say after that is thank you. And I'm like, no, you're supposed to say you're welcome after you say thank you, not thank you after someone says you're welcome. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm from a different country than you. I don't know. That's... You're a douche. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yes, that's what we're doing. We're being those douches. That we're saying thank you before you give. We're basically trying to get you to give us money as part of our donation drive. They're never going to give it now. Ah, dang it. Okay, you try. No, we'll, we'll, we'll let no, you no, try next try time around. another time. You're very tired. <laughs> and again, Big is very tired. And he has to be up soon. But he's still recording these with hopes that you will donate. <laughs> So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> no! Oh. Okay. So uh, you've got the topic for today. And basically every day we're going to talk another Halloween-related theme. Theme? Topic. Topic. Okay, that works. Basically, we have this lizard as a pet. Okay? And this lizard, it you can't just give a lizard lizard chow, unfortunately, because there's no such thing. And lizards won't just eat chow. And, yeah, if you give a lizard a cookie, he's going to try to take over the world. He's, yeah, going to want some milk to go with it. So what you do have to get for a lizard is live food. So uh, maybe you've been to the pet store and you've seen the little... They're ghastly little things, actually. These little containers where they keep crickets inside them. They're live crickets that are meant to be fed to things like lizards and... Frogs and snakes. Frogs and Salamander. snakes and those kind of uh, animals. But yeah, if you look in there, oh my gosh, if they're full. There'll there be hundreds and hundreds. Hundreds and hundreds. And oh my gosh, is that creepy to see that many crickets in one place. But yeah, I, I, I had to pick some of those up today for the lizard because he was getting hungry. And so I got a bunch of crickets, and they put them into a little bag for you, and they tie the bag closed so that the crickets won't hop out in your car. And yeah, I took those crickets out to the car, and I set them down on the seat. And then I kind of wish I hadn't taken them out of the bag yet so I could hold the bag up to the microphone. But they're sitting there in the seat next to me, and it's quiet, and you can hear this... The sound of the crickets, like... They're all just piled on top of each other and they're just kind of running around and moving and squirming and on this plastic bag. And it's a, it's a super creepy sound. It, it's one of those things that like makes you, you, you get that shiver, that uncontrollable shiver of your shoulders and you just kind of tweak out a little bit when you hear it. Almost like a fingers being scratched on the chalkboard kind of a feeling. But a little different because it's scary, not just bleh, which is what you get more from the fingers and the chalkboard thing. But yeah, it was just, I just thought, oh, that's, gosh, that's a creepy, scary sound. And you got in the car 
And did you hear the sound while you were in there? Were you able to hear it? I did hear it. Did you find it icky? <laughs> I wish I could say that I did to help with this episode, but you had already told me. And so I was on the lookout for it because I, I didn't know what you were talking about. And then when I heard it, I was kind of delighted that I had heard it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I hear it. I hear it. Kind of that kind of uh-huh. thing. Cool. But um, yeah, so it's, sorry. Yeah, that doesn't help you with the story. It's all right. But it, it, there was a sound. Uh, and yeah, it was a scraping, rustling noise. And plus it's encased in plastic. And so it might reverberate or echo in some way. You know what I'm talking uh-huh. about? And then the plastic was inside a paper bag, right? No, it was all by itself. Rape. Yes. Oh, uh, wait, what? <laughs> but the thing is, had I not known about it, had you and I gone out to dinner and you hadn't said anything and I heard that, I would have been like, hey, dude, there's something in the back seat. Yeah, yeah, it's something like that where it's just an unpleasant sound. It's it's one of those kind of things where there's something something's wrong. What's what is that? And that's a, a, a kind of thing that you can get from sound. And I guess we started to talk about this all the way back in our first episode. Is this not our first episode? Uh, no, this is our something other than first. I'm not sure which one it'll be, but it's not first. It's at least the second. Okay. But anyways, yeah, we talked about it and. Uh, we started to talk about it, I was going to say. And, uh, yeah, we, we, we mentioned just kind of a power that sound can have. Just that something is off. You hear something and you're like, what is that? That is not right. Are there certain sounds that just in, the, in and of themselves are creepy or spooky? Like that scritching sound of the crickets scratching against the plastic. Is that creepy all in, in and of itself? See, to me, it was because I, it wasn't like it was in a scary context. It wasn't like it was one in the morning and I was the only one awake. And, and then I heard this sound coming from somewhere and had to go find out what is that. But is it knowing that it's insect legs that is making that sound? Insect bodies crawling over one another. Is that where this, the fear comes from? Or is it if if plants rustling in the wind could make that sound, would it be as scary? I don't know. It's hard to say. Knowing the fact that I knew it ahead of time, it could be that because yeah, I like like I said, it came from that cricket uh, container at the pet store, and today it was full as can be. I've never seen it as full as it was today. Usually, I mean, half the time I go there, like, oh, well, we're all out of crickets. Sorry. Yeah, come back on Tuesday. We get some. Sorry. Now, I, I, I'm trying to picture in my mind uh, you going into a pet store and, and what the crickets are kept in. Is it fair to say it's kind of like a tub with a hinged lid on it? Yeah. But it's a big enough tub that if the mafia wanted to punish somebody... They could stick some guy's head in there, right? Oh, yeah. It's it's actually big enough that you could fit probably a five-year-old child inside there if they were, you know, kind of balled up. It's a, it's a pretty big thing. And they'll put like a like a whole big old egg carton thing in there. You know, Not the, uh, you know, the one dozen eggs, but like the 20, what do they come in? Not 30, enough to fit 30 eggs in the one big square thing. Kind of, you know, they have several of those, and those were inside there, and they're just covered with with crickets on the front side and on the bottom side. They're everywhere, and there are piles of them in the bottom, and they're just crawling over the top of each other. And it's like creep show where the cockroaches are all just swarming everywhere, all one over the top of the other, over the top of the other, or you know, something like that that you've seen in the movies where they're just all over the top of each other so that might possibly be the reason why that sound scares me okay but let's say or scared me let's say that it was baby spiders crawling out of a dead man's urethra (laughs) okay let's say that would it be more or less frightening than a pet store container full of oh obviously it's going to be more because a spiders are scarier than crickets there's just no way around that okay that's true they're they're inherently scarier, uh, and these are the pale, light light brown tan crickets. Yeah, not the uh, black Would you say the black fat crickets are scarier than the pale tan? Crickets? I would think they probably are, but I'm not sure. 
Okay. I've never put that to a test. Stephen Hawking's not here to tell us the definitive yeah. answer. Um, but, okay, I'm sorry, but uh, let's say that little Angus couldn't remember the order of the books of the New Testament, and so you stick him in the barrel of crickets. <laughs> okay. That'll learn him. How bad of a torture is this for a child? Is this a child protective services? We're going to find a new home for this kid. Oh, hell yeah. So are you kidding me? A barrel of crickets? <laughs> Just having a barrel of crickets means you need to have your children taken away from you. You know, an interesting thing. I ha- ate crickets not too long ago. Wait, you ate? Crickets? Ate. You consumed crickets? I consumed. I chewed them up and swallowed. There's this some guy here locally. I think he's actually more than locally. I think he's he's got, a homeless man is what you He's got saying. restaurants. He's got restaurants with cricket things available. Basically what he's... There are crickets on the menu, you're saying. Yes. Um, but what this guy's doing is he's got... He, he says that, you know, here in the West, we... All these people have settled in the last, you know, 50 years or so. Probably more like 60 or 70 now. But, you know, when people first started going West and in large numbers in the, you know, mid-20th century... Apparently, the West was in a really big kind of boom time. I don't know what the word would be right for, but there was lots of water. More water than is normal in the West. And so all these people thought, oh, yeah, look at all this water. Yeah, we can all move in. Come on, bring your friends. Um, So tons of people moved into places like L.A. where there isn't a lot of water. Uh, You know, all, you know, these gigantic cities now exist in these places where they're just not water sufficient to support these people and so la is drawing from water from everywhere that they can get northern california that was one of those things that that helped me to hate people from la when i grew up in northern california is that half of the water that we had went down south to the people who were living in their gigantic city where there was no water and so we would be in drought conditions and crap like that and we would have to conserve while we sent all our water to the angelinos but anyways, yeah, his his thing is, okay, the amount of water it takes to raise a cow is this much. The amount of water it takes to raise a pig is this much. The amount of water it takes to raise chickens is this much. And then he said the, to get the same amount of protein from a cow, you have to have 50 gallons of water or 20 gallons of water for a pig or 10 from a chicken. And then a cricket, you got, you know, a teaspoon of water or something like that was enough to give you a ton of protein in other places of the world apparently eating insects is not an unusual or a creepy or a freaky thing they just do it they always have but here in the united states people are afraid of eating so he tries to make crickets into something that you can eat so i ate a cricket brownie Okay, now wait. This is in preparation for the apocalypse to come. I guess. Or I don't he's know. just trying to say, you know, other countries do this. You should at least try it, so you'll know. Or, 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 or are they genuinely good? And he's like, I like these. You should try here. You'll like it. I promise. You'll like it. Well, I, I think it's a little of probably all of that. Maybe I, he never got. He never outgrew the fraternity mentality <laughs> of, you know, it's like to uh, pledge our, etern- yeah. our fraternity. You're going to have to eat a cockroach, three moths, a grasshopper, and 11 crickets. It's, I don't know about if, the, if it's the frat mentality, but I think he's just trying, he wants to change the mentality for us so that someday it may be the case that, yeah, that's, that's something we may have to turn to is eating insects. And presently, the people that live in this area would probably just die rather than eat insects. <laughs> I think he's, I don't know, it's, you know, hippies are into saving the planet and preparing the people for what they what is to come. Uh, so, you know, they're into gardening and they're into, you know, that kind of stuff. And I think this is just another one of those things. And this guy's got a restaurant where he serves crickets. So there were cricket brownies at... Uh, the uh at where i work because one of the guys went out and did a remote as it's sometimes called they did a story on the news about the yeah it was it was one of those live things where he, okay. they kept coming back to him hey everybody welcome back we're here eating crickets look 
Oh, they're so good. Uh, and now, wait, wait, wait. I got to get a, a, a judge's ruling on that. <laughs> this actually happened. He spooned crickets into his mouth. Dead crickets, I'm assuming. Yes, they were dead. He, Covered when something cooked in something? He had uh, several different things that you could choose from. There was the brownies. There was another thing. And then he just like, and this is just crickets ground up into kind of like a flour that we can use to cook the brownies with. And he took a spoonful and put it in his mouth and said, hmm, tastes like flour. Sorry, man. My stomach is at the thought of the delicious <laughs> cricket flour. So, yeah, he tasted the flour and said it was gross. But he brought back a bunch of these cricket brownies. Okay. And they had, they we were having a meeting after one of our shows. And they said, oh, yeah, look at there's these crickets. Can you believe this one person actually ate it, put it in his mouth? And I picked it up and I went, oh, you mean like this? And I put it in my mouth and took a bite. And it was like, oh, my gosh. Ah. You know, it's just one of those things that for fun. And? It was all right. It wasn't that bad. It was a little crunchy, I'll have to admit. You could tell that it was something like ground up crickets. And it was a brownie that was made not just from chocolate. You know what I mean? Sometimes people do odd things with And it was one of those that had probably like paprika or I don't know what in it. Because it had a, like a, a spiciness to it. Uh, they had a lot more in there than just chocolate you know co- it wasn't just flavored with cocoa it had something extra to it which i think you can get without crickets i'm pretty sure they make brownies in many places that still have that bite to it or whatever you want to call it but in this particular case yeah it was uh, a cricket brownie and i have to admit i didn't have a second i don't know if i even finished the brownie i think i may have just had one bite and been like yeah that's enough. <laughs> so it wasn't good, but how much of that was knowing what was in it? I don't think it was a whole lot of knowing what was in it. And it was more just, uh, it was cr- kind of crunchy. I don't know. It was unpleasant, but I'm sure probably yeah, knowing what was in it was enough to keep me from, you know, I don't need to eat this whole thing. <laughs> There's nobody watching anymore. <laughs> so I'll just let it go. But I didn't spit it out. I did actually swallow it. Cool. Cool. And yeah, I th- I, that's something that I think everybody, uh, every adult should be able to say, I've tried this and I've tried that. Instead of just having that eternal kid mentality of, ew. Yeah. And all that, because there are things that other cultures eat with relish that are, are delicacies that we all go, ew. What? Pickle relish? The hell? <laughs> but, uh, the, the, <laughs> we said they eat it with relish. We would... Uh, That we shudder at, but who knows, you know, if you tasted it and you didn't know what it was or I don't know. A lot of it is the mental block of, you know, you don't want to know what goes into the sausage or you wouldn't eat it. You've heard that a million times. Um, Yeah. Two things you never want to see being made. Laws. And sausage. And your sister's babies. Uh, yeah, you know, it's interesting because I was just talking with a guy not too long ago and he was talking about when he went to Hawaii and he went with some other folks and he was like, it was like a group of people and him and his wife were two of the oldest people there and all the other younger kids, I think it was a college group and he's one of those guys that's like still in college even though he's like 40 and has grown children and one of those kind of things but anyways now is he the eternal frat guy he's not but yeah he he was he was like yeah you go to hawaii and you see some kind of crazy fruit or something you don't go like you know what is that and turn your back and walk away because this is something you're not going to get anywhere else you know it's your chance i mean that's why you came to this place is to experience something different and so if you see something, some dragon fruit or whatever the heck it is, you try it. You don't go to Hawaii and eat at the McDonald's every time you're there. But that's what all these other people that came with him, like, oh, there's a McDonald's over here. Why don't we just get that? And he's just like, are you kidding me? No, we got to stop at whatever hole in the wall shack that we drive past that serves food and eat the pig that's been roasted underground. You know, you, you got to do that kind of stuff. That's why we're here. Um, and yeah, you gotta, you gotta get to that point, you know, be able to grow up enough that you're not afraid to try something different and just to be able to say that you tried it. I actually did that once 
where this person was drinking curdled milk. He put sugar into curdled milk, stirred it up, and was like eating it like this was something that you do. <laughs> and he's like, well, you want some? And I was like, all right, <laughs> I'm going to try it because I'm not going to say I didn't. Yeah, I, I, there's been several times where I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to eat this so that I can say that I ate it. For no other reason. I don't care if it's even absolutely disgusting. That's why. Like, the first time I had calamari mm. was a homecoming night. Uh, we went out, you know, all, all me and my friends went out for our, our big date. We were all at this restaurant. And, uh, yeah, I was like, there's calamari and we're all going to try some. And, yeah, that's what we did. We all tried it. And it was these little fried up squids. And we're just like, yeah popping it in our mouths and chewing it up and we're like okay and we i think we had uh escargot the same night oh wow we tried See, them I'm, both I'm, I'm always afraid to try those kind of things because i'm a coward it's, you know because <laughs> knowing what it is it looks gross but it, it could taste fine you know a lot of seafood tastes the same uh, and i you know I, I don't know if there was a little octopus inside two hamburger buns and I bit into it, I probably wouldn't know that that's what it was. But it's seeing that it's octopus mm -hmm. that's disturbing about it. Uh, there's a Cajun restaurant that opened up, and my friend took me out to the Cajun restaurant, and he ordered alligator. Ooh. And I said, I've, I've got to taste it. I've got to <laughs> know. You know what I mean? Just so uh -huh. I can say, I've had alligator. And it was fine. There, it was it was Tastes it like was chicken. Not, all that gamey. I mean, it did have a slightly different taste than chicken or than oh, any other good. kind of meat or whatever. But, you know, now I can say that I did. And there's a lot of stuff that I should try just so I could say, yeah, well, I've tried that. You know, and, Yeah, it wasn't too long ago that I had my, the lamb for the first, or I guess it's called, it's called lamb, right? That's not the baby. Sure. Or is it the baby? I don't know. Wow. The sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I do believe they call it lamb. But there was a, a restaurant that came to do a demonstration. And they were making lamb kebabs. And then, yeah, when they were done, I'm like, all right, I'm trying one of these. I don't know that I've ever had lamb before. So I tried it. And it was, it was good. So I enjoyed it. Yeah, this has stopped being scary. Yeah, um, we're talking about being adventurous. But the we way off topic from the scary sounds. But I think... Eating f scary food can be a scary thing as well. And I, it's, it's one of those things that you can be afraid of a lot when you're a child for some reason. Like kids are afraid to try things. It's weird. You know, when you're a little baby, you just eat whatever is put in front of you no matter what it is. Kids just stick it in their mouth and they eat it. But at a certain point, they stop being that way you give them a cucumber and they put it in their mouth and then they no and they spit it back out on you and yeah my son my oldest son was that way when he was little he would eat anything you know we you get that baby food that's just like ground up goop that's you know made of peas or whatever and he would eat it all with gusto he loved it i, I believe it was the gerber soylent green yes but at a certain point he decided he wasn't going to eat any vegetables whatsoever. And yeah, he's still, sadly, 13 years old, can get so worked up about it that he can he, he makes himself gag as he tries to swallow these things. Because and it's got nothing to do with natural reactions. It's all built up in his head to where he can't eat it. He just cannot do it. He'll gag it back up. He'll choke himself on it rather than eat a vegetable. And, yeah, kids get that way where you get to a certain point and now they're just afraid. It's sad when you see that, to tell you the truth. Those kids that are like, I just want cheese pizza. Jeez, I just like cheese. <laughs> and, you know, they, they make you pick pepperonis off the pizza because all they want is the cheese pizza. Or they make you pick they the pineapples pick off. the cheese off. <laughs> or there's the kid that, that I know who won't eat tomatoes of any form whatsoever so we get pizza and she's like i don't like pizza because they have tomato sauce and i don't like tomatoes so she just won't even eat the pizza at all yeah that can be a really scary thing and you know it's there's so much out there to be tried and had that 
just amazing stuff that you, if you're afraid, you'll never know. And I've always been, my biggest problem has always been seafood. My mom had a real issue with seafood and she just did not like it. Didn't like the smell of it. Didn't like the taste of it, anything. So we hardly ever had it. And when we did have it, it was the, the deal where you plug your nose and eat it so that you don't taste it kind of a thing. <laughs> did you ever do that when you were I a did. child? I did. It never worked, though. But yeah, it was like that. You know, she was she was trying not to let on how much she was grossed out by this fish that she had to cook because my brother went out fishing and caught some gigantic fish or some crap like that. And, you know, she did her best to not let on how much she hated it. But yeah, so I, that, that's one of those things that I'm still trying to get over. Unfortunately, and as, as old as I am, I'm I'm getting better. I'm able to eat some fish, but I still have a hard time with the taste of it when it's really fishy tasting. I can handle those really deep fried fish sticks and stuff like that. But the more fishy it is, the harder time I have with it. But I did eat calamari. So there you go. That's something. Well, yeah, you've ended this episode on a positive note let me ruin it my cousins all went like abroad you know for what do you call it i almost said travel abroad but when you exchange student or something i don't know like you know one of my cousins went to russia and one of my cousins went to south america and my girl cousin went to the island of lesbos and (laughs) my oldest cousin he went to Colombia, which is not a place you want to go yeah and he had been told, you know, because you're American and you have different germ tolerances, you got to boil your water. Mm-hmm. And so he would boil his his drinking water, you know, the, the tap water, all of the time. But he was in this little village and everybody around him started getting sick. And they started having these round red blotches on their skin. And people were getting sick and, the, and somebody said, it's the water, there's something in the water. And they, this was a village that had a, a water tank, a communal water tank. And so they said, well, we got to we gotta check and see what's going on. And they opened it up, and there was a man in it. A, a, a man had climbed up there, and he had fallen into the water tank. And they were drinking, oh, demand, some dead guy was <laughs> in the water tank. Anyway, he told me this story, and I was like, no, that never happened. And he's like, I promise it happened. And I said, well, then you never drank it. And he's like, I did. I just boiled it. And to me, that was a ghastly, horrible, horrible story. And I always want him to tell it. Yeah. Let me tell you. Let me one up you that story. Okay. Here in the United States of America, which is not Colombia, so it's not a place you don't want to go. There was a hotel in Los Angeles where a person that was staying there for some reason climbed up and got into the water tank of this hotel and fell inside there and drowned and was inside the water tank that fed this hotel. And for several days, people were getting this water from this place and going, the water is, there's something wrong with the water. It smells terrible and it tastes awful. And, And finally, somebody went up and checked and they found this person that had died inside there. And these people, everybody who had been staying at this hotel for several days was showering in it and drinking it and so on. And yeah, same kind of ghastly thing, but brand new setting right here, right where you live. As a matter of fact, it was you inside there dead. In which place? <laughs> in in Los Angeles, in that hotel. Uh, yeah, that actually happened. I, I uh, edited the news story about it. Happened in Los Angeles. And there were people giving comments outside going, Oh my gosh, I can't believe that that's what was going on. I knew there was something wrong with the water. Uh, no lawsuits? Hard oh, to imagine in America. There were no I'm lawsuits. sure there's a lawsuit for every room in the place. There was a lawsuit for the mailman who delivered to that hotel room. There. Yeah. There was a lawsuit from all the people who heard the news story on the news. (laughs) That is scary. (laughs) So again, ending on a scary note. Hopefully, yeah. We we went way off topic. The scary sounds turned into scary food and then into ghastly water. But that's kind of par for our course anyways. So this was our cricket episode, I guess. Yeah. Ostensibly, but it was what you said mostly. 
It was my fault. I, st- I steered us awry. I started with the cricket sound and then turned into cricket eating. Oh, well. Thanks for listening, folks. I hope we scared you with cricket eating and dead body drinking. Okay, well, let's let's try and find a positive to this. In the comments, give us some of your experiences of, uh, you know, and then I opened up the sandwich, and there was a dong. <laughs> you know, that kind of, you know the, the awful stories of, you know, the eating something awful or, you know, discovering something that shouldn't have been there. That, 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 right? Sure. Or, or, or the, the weirdest, most messed up thing that you ate when you were somewhere abroad. Like the hundred year egg or whatever it is that you've had that's just people should not eat and yet still you did. And they always eat. Like the dog souffle or whatever it is that you had at Vietnam when you were there. You know, let us know. Put in your story. That would be awesome to hear. That would be fun. Thanks for listening, everybody. You're welcome. Yes, please donate. Bye. Good night. That Gets My Goat is produced under Creative Commons Attribution, Non-Commercial, No Derivatives License, which between you and me means nothing. Okay. Oh, did we miss some good stuff? I don't know. You could have used it as outtakes. I guess it would I know. Really yeah, I had fun. absolutely no outtakes in the first episode. But Was it our lamest episode ever? Oh, it was super lame. <laughs> But it was just the one we recorded in your car, and I said, and sometimes with sound, you can hear the whisper. And you're like, dude, no, 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 we're going to do an episode about sound already. And I was like, oh. <laughs>